on the chip, we have uh, some high-resolution PWMs. So uh, basically, there's two 16-bit counters. And uh, you can control those. And we say they're high resolution because you can position the edge uh, of these PWMs to within 200 picoseconds. Another peripheral on board is the ECAP module. This is the uh, capture module. And basically, that's a 32-bit timer that um, can do a few things. So it can either be used to as a timestamp to record the time between external events based on the input to a pin. You can set based on one of the edges when to start and stop counting. Uh, this can also be changed to be an output, and it can be another uh, PWM output. Another use case of this is you don't have to use the I.O. at all, and it can just be an internal timer. So the next peripheral is the host port interface, HPI. So this would be used where the uh, the OMAP L138 would be um, the slave, and there would be an external host, which would be able to uh, pretty much read any of the re internal registers and have control over uh, the internal chip, whether it's the DSP, the ARM, or any of the peripherals, um, as well as using it for boot. So the, uh, the serial interfaces we have, we have them the DSP. So this would be used mainly for audio uh, interfacing, so we have a lot of the um, inter a lot of the formats supported, um, and I think um, yeah. So for the McASP, we have 16 serial data pins, and the next one is the McDSP, which would be it's a more generalized serializer, maybe not used uh, specifically for audio applications, and it supports a lot more channels, so up to 128 channels um, in full duplex. And we have the SPI interface. So this is another serial interface. Um, we support up to 50 megahertz on it with uh, up to five pins if you want to have the enables and the chip selects included. Um, and this peripheral would be mainly used for, let's say, having control over any of the other uh, devices, such as setting up a configuration for uh, a DAC or for an LCD. So we have UART also. So there's three UARTs on this chip. Uh, and we go up to 12 megabaud with, uh, with a lot of customizable customizability, whether, whether it's the number of bit characters or the, uh, the number of oversampling you're doing. Um, and, of course, we, we have three on board, but the PRU, I think you can get up to uh, either four or eight additional UARTs, depending on um, how, whether they're going to be full duplex or they're just going to be um, stripped down versions. We have uh, two I2C um, controllers on board, and uh, so again, this would also be used for things like controlling uh, external chips, like uh, doing configuration for the PMIC, or uh, pretty much doing control signals for other devices. For the GPIOs, all of the pins on the device that are regular digital IOs that are not, you know, sort of special uh, USB or SATA pins can also be configured as GPIOs. Um, so another thing in these GPIOs can be configured on a pin-by-pin -pin basis. So we'll talk about in the pin muxing how that works, but basically it means that if you're not using a, a particular peripheral, you can change them on a pin-by-pin -pin basis to be a GPIO to be used for other functions. So the timers we have on the chip, so there's two, uh, there's uh, two 64-bit timers. Um, I'm sorry, I think there's four 64-bit timers. Um, and timer one can also be used as an external, or sorry, can be used as a watchdog timer to where um, if something doesn't occur within the certain amount of time, you can have it reset the chip. For the boot modes that we support, uh, on the Hawk board itself, we have a, a NAND flash boot and we have a UART boot. Um, but the chip itself also supports other boot modes, such as NOR, HPI, um, I2C, and SPI boot modes. So at the beginning, I mentioned that uh, these chips uh, are good for low power, and some of the techniques we use to achieve that would be um, are listed here, such as clock gating. So you can you can turn off the clocks to any one of the modules inside the chip, the DSP, the ARM, or, the, or any of the peripherals. Um, we have low power uh, sleep modes getting down to 14 milliwatts. Uh, that would be the deep sleep mode. 
We have dynamic frequency scaling, so again, when you don't need all the, uh, the, the high frequency for, for any processing, you can scale that down along with the voltage to uh, consume less power. And any of the FIs on board, such as the SATA, the USB, or the DDR, um, you can independently power those down as well if they're not being used. So the pin mux configuration, um, again, kind of like we said on the GPO, GPIOs, is that uh, every pin can be controlled on a pin-by-pin -pin basis. Um, one important thing to note would be that when a pin is configured, whether a pin is configured as an input or an output, uh, or I'm sorry, if the pin is configured as an, with that, will receive that uh, will receive that signal ungated. So you would have to be careful if there were other peripherals still running that even though you didn't have the pin mux selected for that, they're still going to re be receiving the input. So the pin muxing is kind of complicated on this device. There's so many uh, pins, and there's up to five levels of uh, muxing. So we provided a pin mux utility that can be found on the product page on the TI website. Um, and basically what this allows you to do is if you have a custom board or you want to figure out how to set the, um, the values in the registers for the pin mux, you can use this GUI to pick which peripherals that you need to use um, and then once you're done, you can save it actually as a C header file and then use it directly in your code, and it generates all the, the correct values for you. Okay, as far as uh, software support, so we uh, provide a U-boot version for this. We provide the UBLs that can be used for the ARM um, to get you up and running. So the LSP provides all the, all the software and all the um, code to get you if you want to rebuild anything. And uh, for Linux, we're using open source Linux, just whatever the latest kernel is from the open source. So the development tools, yeah, today we're talking about the Hawkboard, so I'm sure you've seen this. This is the Hawkboard, and um, a lot of the peripherals that we talked about today, such as the, uh, you know, the Ethernet, the DDR, the USB 1 and 2.0 are all found on, uh, on the Hawkboard. Uh, and there's the expansion header I was talking about to where all the other pins um, would come out to these expansion headers, which would allow you to use things like the PRU and, um, and you know, external GPIOs for other things. Um, I'm sure many of you are going to be using, uh, using the UR cable and using Linux for debug on these, um, but we also have a NextDS 100 version 2, which is an emulator. Uh, JTAG emulation controller, and um, with Code Composer, which if you have this emulator, Code Composer can be used for free, um, you can connect to the ARM or the DSP uh, directly without using any other software, um, and it's uh, good for debug and um, just uh, creating programs. Okay, so that's the overview of the chip and all the peripherals, and I think uh, Kasim is going to uh, be talking about the wiki page. Is that right, Kasim? Yes. Oh. Just can you go to hawkboard.org? Open a new okay. tab. And so, hello everyone, and uh, thanks for sharing this webinar. Uh, it's good to see a lot of crowd here and uh, listening to all of us. Uh, there is uh, very little that I wanted to explain basically because uh, there is a lot of activity which happens on IRC and which happens on mailing list and uh, there is uh, quite few of uh, us who are actively participating and uh, explaining and uh, directing uh, the uh, user. So basically I wanted to give uh, very quick hints on where to find what and uh, how things uh, go on Hopboard. So anything you want to know about Hopboard, please log in to www.hopboard.org. Uh, this is where you get to know about uh, complete activity and uh, complete uh, details of uh, Hopboard and uh, active discussions, everything. So just to highlight a few critical links from this site. So basically, getting started and code.google.com, that is the place where you need to go for getting any quick updates on software. The hardware section gives you complete uh, schematics, design files, user guide, and product details. 
anybody can use these design files and manufacture their own hop boards and uh, uh, use it for their own purpose. The design is all open, completely open without any legal or any license is constrained. So on the right side you see like uh, press announcements, like uh, you, uh, whatever we are getting on in the press, uh, we want to put it out there. If you want to buy hop board, uh, just click on the buy now button, you will get a list of uh, distributors who are actually uh, distributing hop boards, it is uh, Parnell or uh, IDA or Innovate Solutions, or Special Computing and uh, the active discussions actually take you through the active uh, discussions that's actually happening on the hop board Google Group uh, forums. Just if you can scroll down a bit. Yeah. So we have Twitter enabled. Uh, a lot of tweets keep coming from us on whatever on uh, the active uh, activities that we go all this. There are a lot of updates and uh, community updates that I keep pulling in on the blog. If someone wants to participate, write something interesting, please feel free to. We, we will be able to update it uh, as soon as soon as we can. If you have any general feedback about uh, us or this site or anything which you want us to know, just go to the feedback section there, write anything with your mail ID and then click submit. I get a lot of inquiries there but uh, none of them will have any content. I think people just click on submit and then uh, leave it there. But if you have really any quick suggestion or something or want to talk to us directly, please feel free to put your uh, suggestions there. You know, any, act, any highly active or interactive document section, so basically you can see on the announcement section, there is a Linux distribution, Angstrom distribution. So there is Narcissus enabled uh, uh, file system that we give. Cohen is actively maintaining it and uh, thanks to him. Uh, there is WinC for Hawkboard. There is Android from Core Feuds um, and uh, the Hawkboard, the uh, Hawkboard laser or whatever is happening. There is QNX, Ecos and Gen2 on Hawkboard. So Ecos and QNX is actually available for OMAP L138 and anybody interested in getting it uh, for their product uh, point of view, you can actually go contact them and uh, get it done. Uh, if you want to subscribe to Hogboard, just uh, write your mail and click on the subscribe thing and you will be able to uh, participate in the active discussions which uh, this group is doing. And uh, there are lots and lots of folks uh, joining on Google Group for Hogboard, so please utilize this opportunity. There is also an IRC section where you can participate and uh, there is also IRC log to it. And, uh, you can actively participate with us and have discuss, have your discussions uh, with all our experts on uh, Hawkboard. And uh, there is Flickr and video sections below and uh, anybody interested to participate or put, put, your, put up your video or something, please, please feel free to do the same. You will be able to um, actually uh, spread a message or something about the hawk board or any demo that you have or uh, anything that you want to demonstrate, please feel free to put it out. Uh, so those things will be put it out here and uh, there are lots and lots of visits per, per day, per month, so uh, you will definitely be uh, able to benefit out of it. So going back to the uh, section, so 